Yo, what's going on guys? It's Cynical and welcome back to a, another video. Today for you guys, I thought I would bring you a video showing you guys my 119 PS4 physical game collection, meaning games that are only physical. Uh, we're not going to be including digital, although uh, I will be listing all of my digital games right here now, uh, just if in case when I do go through all of my physicals and there is a game I'm missing and you guys are thinking, what is wrong with this man? Why does he not have this game? I feel like I'll get a lot of that through DMC5. I do not have the physical, but I definitely do have the digital. So do not worry, my DMC fellows. Now, I understand that 119 really isn't that impressive, especially when you do compare it to a lot of other collections uh, here on YouTube. There are some people out there that have upwards of like 500 plus. It's absolutely insane. But it is one thing that I'm kind of proud of because I've always been into specifically physical physical media, and it's fantastic to know for like the next generation of systems that will be coming out next year, we are still holding on to physical media. There is nothing better than just like getting a fucking game, dude, cracking that bad boy open and just... And I thought this would also be a really cool way of just showing you guys what other sort of games I'm into. Uh, of course, we do a lot of Kingdom Hearts here, and um, I, I know this might be a bit mind-blowing, but I don't just play Kingdom Hearts. Crazy, right? Insane. So without further ado, fellas, let's get through it. Starting off with Uncharted, The Lost Legacy. I love me a bit of Uncharted, big fan of the Naughty Dog games, and this is the most uh, recent Uncharted game to come out. I hear that apparently the, uh, Naughty Dog in the future still do have plans to make more of these, but I think they are taking a slight break for the meantime. Obviously, we do have The Last of Us Part 2 coming out next year, so that's to look forward to. Uncharted 4, A Thief's End. Uh, this would probably have to be my personal favorite Uncharted with number two uh, being a very, very close second. Uncharted, the Nathan Drake collection. So yes, all of the Uncharted. Uh, again, I, I love me some fucking Uncharted. And yes, I did say all of the Uncharted. I even do have Golden Abyss for PS Vita, even though this wasn't uh, developed by Naughty Dog. Still a fantastic play. Persona 5, I know a lot of you guys will be uh, very proud that I actually have this, even though um, I'm not really into turn-based games too much. I picked this up uh, mainly because of the fact that it, it was receiving rave reviews and everyone was like, get it, get it, get it, get it. What are you doing? If you don't have it, there's something wrong with you. Resident Evil Revelations actually really enjoy me some Resident Evil. And when I found out that these were actually on PlayStation 4, I was like, dude, that's an instant cop. I believe these originally came out for uh, Nintendo 3DS, I think. And I ended up chucking them onto uh, PS4. This is number two as well. Very, very nice. I believe you can actually find these in a double pack sometimes. Resident Evil 4, this is generally the fan favorite, although my all-time personal favorite Resi game is actually number five, and I know a lot of die-hard Resi fans are probably screaming at me right now. Resident Evil 5, yeah, my all-time personal favorite one. This is hands down the best couch co-op game I think I've ever played uh, in my life. Me and my friend as a kid used to just go absolute balls to the walls on this game co-op, dude. If you're looking for a good couch co-op game, this is it. Resident Evil 6! Not much needs to be said about this, but Resident Evil 6? Resident Evil 7 with the cool sort of like hollow uh, graphic type case on it. I really like that. Nice little touch. There's the original case right there. Fantastic game. They really changed up the genre for this. They kind of took it more so back to like survival horror. Uh, I played through this entire game in PSVR and it was an absolute blast, dude. So highly recommend Resi 7. The Devil May Cry collection, I originally had this on PS3, but absolutely had to pick up the physical when it came out for PS4. These are the very first three original DMCs. Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition. So the interesting thing about this is you can only get a physical of it in Japan. I actually had to import this uh, even though like the backs is all in like English and whatnot really interesting though I had to get the physical Batman Return to Arkham the Batman games um, these receive absolute rave reviews and the hilarious thing is I've never been able to get into them even though I own the three main ones uh, this is both Arkham City as well as Arkham Asylum but just the weird thing is I can't get into these games here is Arkham Knight uh, I've tried, dude, like, time and time and time again. 
that I just, I cannot do it. There's something about it that I just cannot do. Assassin's Creed Origins. I absolutely fucking loved this game. i uh, never been into Assassin's Creed, never loved the gameplay. It's just not for me personally. But obviously with Origins, they turned it into a more of an open world RPG, uh, you know, with like leveling and stats and gear and whatnot. And uh, that is just absolutely right up my alley. I loved Origins. And then of course, they ended up releasing Odyssey, I believe, like, a year after, which was insane to sort of uh, see. Uh, either that or, like, a, two years after. I can't really remember. But Odyssey was fantastic as well. Again, they stuck to the whole open-world RPG thing. Fantastic games, both of them. If you've never been into Assassin's Creed, please do give both Origins as well as Odyssey a go. Ninja Theory's DMC. So this is obviously not developed by the original Devil May Cry development crew. And I, I know this game is very controversial, but hey dude, like its gameplay was absolutely on point. I think that this Devil May Cry game had the absolute best gameplay before DMC5 came out. I, I like this. I really do like this game. I don't like what they did with the whole reboot thing, what they did with Dante. Um, but this is still a decent Devil May Cry game. The Last of Us Remastered, I mean, shit, dude. Like, if you own a PlayStation 4 and you don't have this, uh, what the hell is wrong with you? Doom, fantastic, run and gun, fast pace, uh, rip demons apart, uh, action, it, it's it's amazing. Uh, Doom Eternal comes out next year, unfortunately. It was delayed this year into 2020. Super looking forward to it. Instead of speaking towards, like, Doom-esque games, Shadow Warrior. Uh, this, I feel, goes under the radar. It's made by Devolver Digital. Fantastic. If you're into those, like, run-and-gun, uh, hack-and-slash type things, because you you've also got, like, a samurai sword that you can level up and do crazy cool abilities with, uh, then definitely pick this up. I know that the physical of uh, Shadow Warrior 1 is actually kind of hard to come across, but if you do, um, usually it is quite cheap. I recommend it. Next is the physical of Shadow Warrior 2. They made a second game out of Shadow Warrior and this one is actually even better in my opinion. Now, the physical you will not be able to find pretty much anywhere unless you go online onto like eBay or something, mainly because this was a limited run. Uh, exclusive. Limited Run are a website that sometimes make physicals for games and the only way to get specifically those physicals for that game is to buy it through them. Once they're all sold out, like they're sold out and if you want to find a physical that's being done through Limited Run you have to go over to eBay by its second hand. But yeah, Shadow Warrior 2, fantastic. This also came with Shadow Warrior 1 as well so it comes with both games, very nice touch. CTR, Nitro Fueled. Yeah, I was absolutely ecstatic to see that uh, Beanox were uh, recreating CTR, as well as chucking in a lot of the stuff from Crash Nitro Kart. One of the best current kart races in amongst, like, obviously Mario Kart. Pick it up if you're into that kind of thing. Obviously, we've got the Gat Dang Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. I am a massive Crash fan and was ecstatic to know that uh, the bad boy was coming back with all three of his original games all looking absolutely sprucey-goosey, so... Crash Bandicoot the Insane Trilogy. I'm also a massive Spyro fanatic as well. I just can't get enough of the old school PS1 platformers, dude. Yup, uh, the Reignited Trilogy uh, came out last year. It was fantastic to see that Spyro also received the same sort of uh, remaster, remake -y sort of treatment for his original games. We got the Ratchet and Clank sort of reboot that came out back in 2016. This was absolutely fantastic. It looks like a fucking like Pixar movie, but like it was a game. It was insane. My only one complaint about it is uh, it was very, very short. I mean, Ratchet and Clank games tend to be, but this one in particular was very short. I hope to see that Ratchet is going to have a future. I'm pretty sure there is uh, talks currently at the moment that another Ratchet game could possibly be in development. We'll have to wait and see. This is fantastic though. Neo Automata, uh, one of my favorite games of the decade, hands down. 2B is... what? Well, to be. I, should I need to say anything? <laughs> it looks like next year we might actually get some information towards another Nier game. Um, so that gets me really, really excited. This though was a fantastic play. If you guys haven't picked this up yet, you can find it pretty cheap these days. Highly recommend. Bloodborne. This was my intro into the sort of Souls series and it's one of my all-time favorite PlayStation 4 games. The weird thing is I can't do Dark Souls. I've just never been able to do it. But for some reason, I just click with Bloodborne. I think 
Uh, the biggest reason why is the overall sort of aesthetic of the game. I love that Victorian Gothic era thing. Not many other games have really ever executed the same sort of environments as Bloodborne has. I guess also the gameplay pacing of Bloodborne is a little bit different to that of Dark Souls, where Bloodborne is so much more dodge dependent. Um, Dark Souls, yes, while it is as well, it sort of leans um, towards like blocking and all that kind of thing too. So. I just feel like the gameplay pace of Bloodborne is a little bit faster, and that's probably why I lean towards it more so. And even though I just said I'm not really into Dark Souls, can't really do it, I did list on my digital list that I do have Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin, and as a physical, I ended up picking up Dark Souls 3. So trust me, I've really tried to push myself into Dark Souls, but I just can't do it. Borderlands, the handsome collection. I love me some Borderlands, especially if you got a few friends. Uh, th this sort of shit is fantastic. Sort of an open world-esque um, first person shooter, shooter looter game. You level up, get your skills, you pick a class, all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. This contains, obviously, Borderlands 2 with all DLC, as well as Borderlands the pre-sequel with all DLC as well. Borderlands 3, obviously, coming out this year. Fantastic play. I'm actually still yet to finish this, though I am pretty much at the very end. Need to get back into it at some point. Uh, unfortunately, I do not own Borderlands 1 Remastered for PS4, but we'll pick it up sometime soon. Marvel's Spider-Man, like, again, one of the best PS4 games, dude, like, if you own a PS4, you need to own this jazz right here, good god almighty, I mean, prior to this releasing, the best Spider-Man game was Spider-Man, uh, I believe, 2 for PS2. Nino Kuni 2, Revenant Kingdom, I heard so many good things about Nino Kuni for such a long time, and I uh, eventually picked this up in 2018 while I was overseas in America, and fantastic game, I ended up finishing it. I always thought and was under the assumption that Nino Kuni was turn-based, but no, it's not. It's a uh, sort of action RPG, so if you guys are looking for a decent action RPG, highly, highly recommend. I'm needing to play the first one, but this is number two, and I loved it. Darksiders 1 War Mastered Edition. This is the remastered version for, obviously, PS4. This leans towards, like, DMC-style gameplay. Absolutely love it. Then, of course, we do have Darksiders 2 Definitive Edition. Uh, this was also really good as well, but then they sort of changed things up and made it uh, lean more towards the RPG side of things, which I really, really appreciated. Darksiders 3, I, I like me some Darksiders. I'm needing to actually pick up Genesis because it's kind of like a Diablo-esque Darksiders. This one, though, uh, was interesting. They kind of made it lean more towards the Souls style of gameplay, so it just kind of seems to be that... Although Darksiders will always be hack and slash to a degree, they always change it out with each new installment, which is honestly really cool. It keeps things refreshing. Dragon Ball Fighters. Um, I tend to rip this out when I have a few friends over and stuff. Not really too good at it when it comes to fighting games. I, I get my ass clapped, but I know my boy Dean would be proud to see that I actually do have this. And this is a fucking good time, man. If you guys are looking for a decent fighter and you're into those, uh, like, Blaz Blue games, um, I, I believe... Arcsoft or whatever, uh, yeah, Arc System Works, sorry, were the ones that made the Blaz Blue series. They also made this too, and they did a fantastic job. Destiny, the Taken King physical that comes with uh, the original Destiny and a few of the other expansions and stuff as well, back when Destiny 1 was pumping. Yeah, I used to be into Destiny 1 back in the day when it first released. I also picked up Destiny 2 when it first came out as well. It was a good time for while it lasted. Uh, nowadays, there's a lot of different changes and updates, and obviously it is actually free to play. Red Dead Redemption 2, one of the best games I've played during this decade. Holy shit, dude. Yeah, Rockstar absolutely kill it with their games. Uh, you couldn't really get into the multiplayer too much, but in the sense of the single player story, this was just fantastic. Neo, another sort of Souls game made by Team Ninja. I absolutely loved this, and number two is actually coming out next year. Yes, dude. Uh, but the reason why I lean towards this is it kind of reminded me a little bit of like the Onim Oni uh, the Oni Mushu games on PS2 uh, a little bit, and this is also very fast paced in the sense of the gameplay pace. So uh, it's probably why I liked it so much, similar to that Bloodborne. Sekiro Shadows Died Twice, so another sort of um, samurai Souls game. This is actually from From Software. This came out this year, and I believe this ended up winning the Game of the Year, if I'm not mistaken. Pretty well deserved. I got to give them. That. I got up to like the part where you're in the mountains, you got the people like sniping you, sniping you, and then you got the boss with the big like gun sniper thing. I, I, I just couldn't progress past that. I need to go back to it at some point, 
but this game, hot as shit, dude. The Outer Scrolls Online, I honestly just picked this up because I found it for like $10. So, um, yeah, I have dabbled in uh, SO, and it's not too bad. I like me an MMORPG, but it, it was a little bit disappointing because I think that for hardcore like Outer Scroll fans, uh, they were expecting a lot more, and it, yeah, it didn't really happen in this. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim VR, it's Skyrim, but for VR, it's a good time. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Special Edition, I had to get it, I mean, you know, I had to get, the, it's, it's fucking Skyrim. God of War, another fantastic play, if you own a PlayStation 4, you need to get God of War. But yeah, I don't think I should really need to say too much about this. It's great. Far Cry 3 Classic Edition, my all-time favorite Far Cry game, in amongst probably most other people as well. I uh, was really excited to know that they ended up making a physical for this because I was only expecting a digital when this was first announced, but no. Here is the physical for PS4. Far Cry 5, this would probably have to be my second favorite Far Cry game. Uh, number 4 wasn't really uh, that great, or at least for me, but... Number five was actually kind of good. And then we have the standalone sort of, it's kind of like an expansion, but not really because it was standalone. The sort of follow up to that of Far Cry 5, which is Far Cry New Dawn. Uh, it takes place after the story events and everything that happens at the end of Far Cry 5. Um, this was actually really good, even though it was like the same map, it was now all post-apocalyptic. I really enjoyed this. Far Cry Primal. Um, no, I, I couldn't do it. I just, I don't, this... I, I picked it up for cheap. I actually got like the collector's edition. I'm not even gonna bother. Actually, no, here it is. Here it is, dude. I found this collector's edition for like, I shit you not, like $20. So and that's, that's why I got it. Days Gone. I actually only just recently picked this up for quite cheap during a Christmas sale. Um, I've heard very mixed things when the like major reviews came out from all of the main media outlets when this first released. It was not performing too well, but then as updates rolled out, more and more people, like, and just in the general community, not like major gaming outlets, but just normal gamers, were saying that this was actually really good. And if you like those sort of open world games where you have to do set different things, the outposts, I mean, I know this sort of format is quite generic at this point, but if you like that format, then uh, apparently this is actually a fun game. Metro Redux. I'm a big Fallout fan, and this is kind of right up that alley, sort of. It, it's not really open world, this is more of a single player uh, sort of driven story first person shooter type of ordeal. I can't really do Metro, which is a little bit unfortunate. I know Exodus uh, came out, was it this year? I, I can't remember. Metro though, if you're into the post-apocalyptic thing, uh, definitely do give it a try. I unfortunately just couldn't click with it. Dying Light, the enhanced edition. This comes with all of the DLCs and whatnot, but this is a fantastic game, dude. An open world zombie free running parkour parkour game. It's really good and we are getting Dying Light 2 next year which is just looking even better. Monster Hunter World, one of the m most fantastic games of all, all time, so people say. I, I got this day one um, and I couldn't do it. I, I know, I just couldn't fucking do it. Shadow of the Colossus. Absolutely had to pick this up as I jammed it as a kid on PS2. Uh, Bluepoint Games just did a phenomenal job of making it look like a current generation title. Like, the, the graphics on this take me back every single fucking time. And also we know that Bluepoint are currently doing some other project, I believe, for PlayStation 5. Cannot wait to see it, especially the way it's going to look in, in the sense of the visuals because they nailed this. Horizon Zero Dawn, again, it's another one of those games where it's like if you own a PlayStation 4, you don't have this, what are you doing? The Evil Within, there's actually a sequel, but I don't own the sequel. Um, I couldn't really get into this game, honestly. It is a survival horror game created by Bethesda, uh, but yeah, I just couldn't do it. I ended up finding this really cheap. There's so many copies of this game that just lie around for like $5. So because it was that cheap, I just ended up picking it up. The Lego Harry Potter Collection. Now the reason why I got this uh, was, well, for one, it was cheap, but the other side of it is I loved the Lego games, specifically, obviously, the Lego Star Wars games as a kid. They were fantastic, and apparently there was like the complete Lego Star Wars collection coming out next year. Hell yes! But I remember seeing as a kid when this Harry Potter Lego thing was uh, first revealed, I was ecstatic because I loved the Harry Potter movie. I'm still yet to actually jam the Lego Harry Potter games, but we'll get around to it on a rainy day. Earth Defense Force 4.1. I've always wanted to get an Earth Defense Force game. It's a game where like uh, massive insects 
are invading planet Earth, and your job is to just annihilate them. Always, always, always heard that these games are so much fun, and yes, I played a little bit. Uh, th these are fun. If you see any of the Earth Defense Force games just lying around, which you probably will, there's quite a lot of them in the sense of how much stock there is, um, you can find them really cheap. They are a lot of fun, dude. Prey by Arcane Studios. Um, this game received some really, really good reviews with the whole Bioshock vibes, and I am the hugest, thickest fucking Bioshock fan there is, and for whatever reason, even though I feel those sort of Bioshock themes throughout this game, I couldn't do it. God of War 3 Remastered, always love me some OG God of War hack and slash is always a good time. Hell yes. Killzone Shadowfall. This is one of the launch titles for PlayStation 4. This is pretty crusty nowadays. Um, I have never played this. The reason why I picked it up was because it was very cheap. Saints Row 4 as well as a Gat Out of Hell. Um, the Saints Row series is a good time. It started off pretty fantastic as like a GTA clone. And then as like more games came out, it started to take itself less and less and less and less serious. But this is the sort of game you just simply jump in, fuck around, you don't take things seriously. Uh, it's it's fantastic. And speaking of Saints Row, uh, the little sort of spin-off game, uh, Agents of Mayhem, which did absolutely poorly. I have never played it. I picked this up because I think I found it for $10 or something. Um, I can't really say too much other than the reviews aren't good. Not many people really enjoyed it. So it was a flop. Ukulele. I really, 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 really want to like this game and cherish this game and love this game. It started off as a Kickstarter with a few of the different developers who originally made a Banjo-Kazooie. This is, in a funny sense, meant to be a spiritual successor uh, to that of Banjo-Kazooie. You can almost tell by like the character design as well as the logo right there. But no, even though I love Banjo-Kazooie, I cannot do ukulele, unfortunately. There's just something about it that just doesn't click. Helldivers, this is a really cool little uh, co-op, a bird's eye view, shooter, 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 fun time game. Um, yeah, no, actually really good if you're uh, playing with friends. It's not the sort of game that is all that enticing if you're just by yourself. Until Dawn, Rush of Blood, if you own a PlayStation VR, please pick this game up. It's an on-rails shooter, roller coaster thingy Medusa with a few jump scares here and there. Part of the Until Dawn series as well. Very, very good game. Mafia 3, ecstatic when this was first coming out because Mafia 2 was a damn well good time. Another sort of like GTA clone in a sense. Uh, unfortunately, although I did have an okay time with Mafia 3, um, it, it wasn't really that great. It wasn't groundbreaking. Number 2 was definitely the best one for me personally, but yeah, Mafia 3. The Order 1886, I believe this was a launch title, either that or it came out shortly after the launch of PS4. This is really just like a movie game of sorts. There's not too much gameplay in it. It is very, very short. This was like the number one complaint when the game like first came out, the length of it and the fact that it was full price. Everyone was like, this should be marked at 30 US. What the fuck is going on? But nowadays, because you can find it just so cheap, uh, to be fair, I would say that it is actually worth its money now. Knack, another PlayStation 4 launch title. I did not get this on launch. I ended up picking it up uh, many, many years later. Found it for extremely cheap. Any of the PlayStation 4 launch titles these days are so cheap. But yeah, Knack, I believe we got Knack 2 nowadays. Uh, I've never played this. I feel like I probably should because it is a platformer and I like me some platformers. Bound by Flame. I have no idea what this is. I've never seen a single slither of gameplay or anything about it. Uh, I just picked it up because I think I found it for like $10. Dragon Age Inquisition. Um, heard mixed uh, sort of things about this. Uh, again, have not played it. I found it for very, very cheap, so that's why I got it. And I've always heard good things about Dragon Age, so I, I thought to myself, I've got to own a Dragon Age game. Bullet Storm, full clip, another one of those uh, crazy uh, run and gun style games. This is a lot of fun because you get uh, awarded different points and stuff depending on how you kill enemies. You got this really cool like whip thing in the game. You can whip an enemy and like throw them into like a cactus or something and you get X amount of points for such and such. Fun as game, you can find it pretty cheap these days. Interesting little uh, fact about specifically this copyright here. Uh, for any of the non-American copies of the game, they ended up uh, with like a mass printing issue and there is no like um, title down the spine. Hi, uh, random voiceover right here that's not syncing up the lips at all, mainly because of the fact that I called this game Dragon Age, not Dragon Quest, so I thought I'd do this to save myself a little bit of embarrassment, even though you guys know that I actually ended up calling it Dragon Age, so 
really, it, it's still embarrassing. But yeah, Dragon Quest uh, t t 12. I'm not into turn-based, but thought I'd pick it up anyway. My second Dragon Quest game, which is Dragon Quest Heroes. This is more of a Dynasty Warriors style of game, and that's pretty much why I got it was because it isn't turn-based, it doesn't play like a traditional Dragon Quest game. Battlefield 1, this is actually the only Battlefield game that I own for PlayStation 4, and the reason why I own this was because it was a gift for someone, and it turned out they already had the game. So I had to get them another gift, and I ended up just keeping this. Um, yeah. <laughs> Wolf Among Us, one of the more highly regarded Telltale games. Never played any of the Telltale games, and I feel like I need to do myself a favor and do that, uh, specifically because I do have one of the better ones as well. It was recently confirmed at the Game Awards, too, that number two is coming out, so maybe I should play this sometime soon. Trials Fusion, um, what is this? The awesome Max Edition, so I'm assuming it's Trials Fusion with all the DLC. I have actually plundered into this uh, a little bit. These are fun, though, to just muck around on. They are physics-based uh, biking games. Used to play, like, a lot of those on the internet via, like, Flash game websites. But this is, like, the real deal in an actual console format. So, highly recommend this type of thing if you're into it. PlayStation VR Worlds. I picked this up along with my PSVR. Good way to test out a bunch of different sort of uh, quirky little mini games for your VR. Prototype Biohazard Bundle. It contains uh, Prototype 1 and 2. These are really, really cool games. Uh, um, it's like sort of if you're into the superhero, or well not so much superhero, you're more of like a sort of villain type of thing in this. But if you're into the open world sort of games with like superpowers, then yeah, pick up Prototype. You can find this real cheap as well. Middle Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain. Uh, this is uh, a very highly regarded title, and I just cannot fucking play it for the life of me. Middle Gear Solid overall is very highly regarded, and although I have tried and tried and tried, I just cannot play these tactical espionage games. Games. I just can't do it. Just Cause 3 Gold Edition. Just Cause is always a good time. Number 3, very nice. Gravity Rush 2, I have number 1 for my PlayStation Vita, and number 2 is just as good as the first game. Highly recommend. You can also find this pretty cheap these days as well. Tales of Zitsteria, I probably absolutely butchered that. The Tales series is very highly regarded, but I can't do it. I just cannot do it. I picked this up because this was a game that was recommended to me time and time and time and time again, and I played it, and it just, I, it, no, I, ca I can't. Little Big Planet 3, baby, yeah, this was a PlayStation 4 launch title. This came with my PS4, actually. Uh, real cool if you're into that sort of creative S stuff of uh, just mucking around, creating things, then Little Big Planet 3, hell yes. Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls. Uh, these are those sort of movie S games where you get to choose the decisions, and based upon that, it'll take you in a different sort of direction or branch. Yeah, nice little two pack right here. Uh, Heavy Rain is fantastic. I have not played Beyond Two Souls, though. Haven't really heard too many good things about it. Call of Duty Black Ops 3, it's a Call of Duty. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, absolutely fantastic. This is one of the best Star Wars games to come out in such a long time. We've been looking for that whole like single player Jedi game for an extremely long time and, 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 and here it is. And Cameron does an absolutely fantastic job as acting as Cal. I absolutely love him from like Shameless as well as the uh, the Gotham series. Disney Infinity, and you're probably thinking, why the fuck do you own this, Cynical? What is going on here? So, the reason why I picked this up was because my uh, very good friend, Roman, ended up actually giving me the exclusive, I think it was 2016, D23 King Mickey outfit uh, for Disney Infinity. And by King Mickey, I mean like the Kingdom Hearts King Mickey outfit. Uh, it meant that like if you put the disc on your little pad thing, you could play as Mickey from Kingdom Hearts in Disney Infinity. So that is literally the only reason as to why I own Disney Infinity. This is actually discontinued nowadays, which is a little bit sad. Tomb Raider Definitive Edition. Uh, I mean, like, if you're into the whole Uncharted thing, then yeah, uh, Tomb Raider is fantastic. Mad Max, I have not really given this too much of a go. I've more so seen my friend jamming this, and it actually looks like a good time, another sort of open world s type of game where you do different things and missions and there's car driving and whatnot. Yeah, Mad Max. Sleeping Dogs Definitive Edition. Yeah, no, this is another sort of GTA clone, except I believe it's based in... Uh, is, is it in China or Tokyo? I'm not really too sure. But this is a really, really fantastic game, and you can find it very cheap nowadays. Homefront, uh, absolute fucking trash. Uh, but I found it real cheap, so I was like, okay. 
Okay. Day six, Mankind Divided. Another game that I found really, really cheap. I've heard pretty good things, although I've never actually given it a go. Watch Dogs 2, a game that I've recently picked up, and I finally picked up a Watch Dogs game. We've got uh, Legion coming out next year. Watch Dogs has had a very, very rocky run, though I think Watch Dogs 2 really gave a bit of redemption uh, to the series. Now, I haven't personally played it, but many of my friends in my own personal life, as well as people online, say that this is actually really good. Don't let the whole, like, Watch Dogs curse thing when it initially came out uh, stop you from picking this up. So, I literally picked this up a week ago during a Christmas sale, and I'm actually quite excited to give it a go. Okami HD, uh, one of those PlayStation 2 fucking classics, man. I absolutely had to pick this up when it was remastered for PS4. Drive Club, another game that I got with my PlayStation 4. It's it's a racing game. Dead Rising. I like tripped balls when I walked into EB Games one day, and because uh, I had not heard any news or anything about the fact that Dead Rising One, Two, and Two off the record or something or Case Zero or some shit was coming to PS4. Even though Number Two and that other one was originally on PlayStation Three, I believe. Um, the original Dead Rising was never, ever, ever on PlayStation. This was actually an Xbox 360 exclusive, and I used to play it all the time. So when I saw this, this cover was like the PlayStation logo up top. I'm like, am I, am I seeing this right? Am I, am I fucking tripping out? Shadow of Mordor, Game of the Air Edition. I haven't played too much of this, and I feel like I need to, because it's actually a really fun time. Dishonored 2, a very stealth, heavy focus game. Uh, quite cool if you're into that type of thing, but me, not so much. Dear Blob, um, yeah, I had to pick this up. This is a really fun game. I don't care what anyone says. I used to play this all the time after school when I used to go over to my friend's place. He used to own a Wii, and I believe back then it was Wii exclusive. So I was thrilled to see that Dear Blob got a, uh, got a port to that of like Xbox One and PS4, I believe. Very fun time. You just basically have to paint a very grey looking city with different colours. It, it's actually a lot of fun. Kingdom Hearts 1.5 plus 2.5 HD Remix. This is the Japanese version. Yes, I did actually pick up the Japanese version. Uh, the cover obviously looks a lot different. It is just simply the logo, so they're keeping it very simple and clean. Kingdom Hearts 1.5 plus 2.5 HD Remix. Not the Japanese version. This is the normal standard cover that most of us come across. Kingdom Hearts, the story so far. Uh, this contains Kingdom Hearts 1.5 plus 2.5 HD Remix, as well as Kingdom Hearts 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue. I gotta own all the Kingdom Hearts physicals, man, I have to. So that's why we have Kingdom Hearts a 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue. Look at that cover, I still cannot get over it. It's just, it's one of my favorites. Kingdom Hearts 3, Babi. Hell yes, you guys know me, of course, of course, of course, uh, and I actually do have the deluxe edition right here, but here it's just the standard physical. Final Fantasy XII, I used to actually play a lot of Final Fantasy XII as a child, and that might seem weird because you guys know me, not overly too into the whole Final Fantasy thing, but was thrilled to know that they eventually, it took them a while, but they eventually made a remaster for this and also included the Japanese exclusive stuff. Final Fantasy XV, I uh, really liked this, even though I know for like so many hardcore Final Fantasy fans, this is an absolute thick disappointment. I fucking loved it, man. Final Fantasy Typo HD. Now, literally, the only reason why I got this was to play the exclusive uh, Episode Dusk Final Fantasy XV demo all the way back when, when this came out. Now we're on the final home stretch right here, getting into the sort of uh, boxed games with like interesting, cool looking sleeves. This right here is uh, Sonic Mania Plus. Most of the Sonic Mania games, I believe, all come with this really nice sleeve. Uh, that is just like the standard there, but I think, like I'm pretty sure every single Sonic Mania is a limited edition. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, again, I'm pretty sure all of the Witches the threes come with this sleeve and like all the nice little goodies inside. Uh, this is rated like one of the best games of all time. And please don't fucking pitchfork me, but I can't do it. I, I just, I cannot do it, dude. Bioshock the Collection, my god, when this was announced, I think it was like 2014, was it? 15? I don't know, I can't remember, it was such a long time ago. But when this was announced, all three of the Bioshock games come into our current gen systems. Oh man, I was ecstatic. I absolutely ecstatic. I love me some Bioshock, it's one of my all-time fucking favorite franchises in Amongst Kingdom Hearts and all that. Crash Bandicoot Spyro, but Bioshock 
Hancock is fucking right up there. And also, uh, recently we did get the confirmation that there is currently a, another Bioshock game in development. World of Final Fantasy. Now, although I go on and say that uh, I can't do turn-based, this is probably the game that I've put the most amount of time in that is actually turn-based. I've put a decent, like, 25 hours into this game, and I think it was, like, the whole collector thing towards it, and the fact that it also infuses so many other Final Fantasy characters and creatures and all that kind of thing. But I really, really enjoyed this. I never got around to finishing it, but I am probably going to do that at some point. Wolfenstein 2, another really cool, like, run-and-gun type game, a single-player first-person shooter. Uh, this is the Welcome to America edition. I think it's got, like, what is it got? It's got some TV guide and, like, a wallet thing in it. And, and uh, Wolfenstein 2. Rise of the Tomb Raider, the 20th year celebration edition. Very nice. Again, if you're into, like, the whole Uncharted thing, um, definitely play the Tomb Raider games. They are so good. And the final Tomb Raider game, which is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is the Steel Book edition. But, yeah, again, I, I don't know what more to say about it. If you like Uncharted, play these. Fallout 4. This is the Steel Book because I ended up getting the Pip Boy edition. I am an absolute Fallout head, although it sucks to know where Fallout is currently at with Fallout 76. But yeah, love me some Fallout, dude. Far Cry 4, uh, limited edition. I just didn't really like Far Cry 4. It kind of sucked. I just didn't really like the setting or any of that, but I do have it. Far Cry 4. Yakuza Kiwami. Um, the only reason why I got this was because I actually managed to find this brand new for quite cheap, and I've heard a lot of good things about the Yakuza series. I'm actually yet to play it, and I think I will actually sometime soon, because it looks hilarious and serious at the same time. I like that mix. And finally, to wrap it all up, Final Fantasy X and X2 HD. I swear to God, every copy of this for PS4 is always steelbook. I've I don't know, I don't think I've ever seen just the standard copy of this physical. It's always the Steelbook. So I don't know if this is really anything special. Whew. Okay, that was a lot to get through. That took me a lot longer than I was actually expecting. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed today's video. In the comment section down below, guys, I'd love to know how many PS4 physicals you guys currently have in your collection. Please do let me know. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it does give you a sort of uh, good idea as to the sort of games that I am actually into. Again, quite a few of them are games that I just picked up for the sake of picking up because they were cheap. And a lot of these games I'm still actually yet to play. However guys, with all that being said, I'm Cynical. Hopefully you do having a fantastic day and until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Peace. Hit him on a page, you'll be coming through stain. Go dead my mouth when you suckers be bluffing. Little crank, gaming up your bitch though. Catch me in the back, playing Super Nintendo.